Hey everyone. Being able to educate your board is one of the most important ways for a leader to build strong relationships and foster a positive and productive culture between board members and their executive director. Run by leadership expert Mark Buzan, the nonprofit board summit provides outstanding know-how, resources, and tips for leaders looking to step up and unlock the full potential of their endeavors. If you're a nonprofit executive director looking to build a stronger board, visit nonprofitboardsummit.org slash EDS. Or if you're a board member looking to make more of an impact, visit nonprofitboardsummit.org. The Nonprofit Board Summit runs from February 26th through the 28th. I'll hope to see you there. Hey, welcome. I'm sitting here today with Cowboy Jacks Young, and we're going to get into the strategic partnerships. He's got partnerships with Orange County Shoppers. They built their own bike, and he's also the founder of SHF Save Home Front. Jax, how you doing today, brother? Better than I deserve. I could be in the hospital right now, so it's pretty good to be here instead. Yeah, anytime that uh, we get a chance to talk, we just absolutely love doing that. Uh, why don't you give us a little background on SHF and, and what that is and what you all do? Well, we opened the doors in 2016, and um, over the course of opening the doors, you know, at first we were just kind of filling it out, but eventually found our niche. And our niche is really being able to use professional pro- uh, entertainment projects with partnerships that afford us the opportunity to create a proper proper depiction of U.S. veterans. How that all came about was, you know, I have almost 20 years in professional entertainment. And I went through a bout of being homeless and became a suicide survivor. And coming out on the other end of that, really taking a look at the veteran landscape, I realized that the national narrative of how people depicted veterans needed to change. And so since 2016, um, we've had at least one professional entertainment project each year that has been successful, that has kind of been a building block that has led us to 2020, which we'll get into today um, with working with Orange County Choppers, Authentically American, and of course, Save Homefront in order to do some amazing things for history and with Americana the Chopper. And I'm sure we'll probably unpack some of that stuff too. But it's been an amazing journey thus far. It's afforded us the opportunity to work with world influencers, celebrities on an ongoing basis and things of that nature, because I believe that community neighbors, non-veterans, really are hungry to create a working relationship in their communities with veterans. The problem is, is that people don't think that they understand each other. And where SHF is helping to fill that gap is by creating these entertainment projects of interest. Yeah, I I definitely agree. You know, me being in the Navy for over 20 years, you having been in the 101st Airborne and the the Army and and involved in country music, you know, we have these these different perspectives and ideas of what this might look like. And, you know, when I talk about my story and I share my stuff, people are like, how are you not more messed up? I was like, well, why should I be messed up? Well, this happened and this happened, this happened. And you're in the military. So obviously you're messed up. I was like, you probably still think that full metal jacket is exactly what the military looks like. And they're like, what, what else would it look like? I'm like, most of us are business professionals. And a lot of us go into an office and work. We're not slugging through the mud, carrying packs. I've been in aviation my whole career, either, you know, fixing ejection seats or air conditioning systems and now flying a nuclear command and control platform. I'm like, I've been in aviation the whole time. I've never once had to carry a ruck anywhere and, and do anything like that. And they're like, really, I had no idea. And that's the depiction and that's the vision that you're trying to change, if I've heard you correctly. Yeah. And there's also another element to that as well that's important is understanding that military service gives you the building blocks to go on to do the most extraordinary things in your life. Because whether your service is short time or it's long term, it's still temporary. Service to this country is temporary. Support lasts a lifetime. You know, there's still that expectation once you get out on the other side that you've got to get some kind of career going or something going. And it doesn't even have to be in the entrepreneurial space. You know, that's another thing that just kind of seems to be trending right now is that every veteran has to be an entrepreneur. You've got to own a whiskey company or you've got to own a t-shirt company or you've got to own a, a 
some kind of athletic event or whatever. And it's like, you know, one of the things in terms of our mission that's important is that the funding that we do raise with SHF is going back into giving that education to U.S. veterans to be successful in the workplace. Because I think that is what is most important. It's one thing to be able to say, well, that's not who I am. It's another thing to show and have metrics that show who I am, right? Because Duke just did a study, and this blew my mind. You know, they had uh, non-veterans, which we call community neighbors. I'm no longer in the United States military. Therefore, you're not a civilian to me. I'm not under any kind of DOD contract. Therefore, you're not a civilian to me. You're my community neighbor. And in this survey, now mind you, this is in 2020. In this survey, just like what you were talking about, non-veterans, community neighbors felt that veterans would not be able to sustain or handle situations that would involve social environment environment you know, social environment or emotional response, right? That they would, they would in those kinds of career fields that they wouldn't do well. Now, I don't know about for you, but for me, that's mind blowing. When we live in a world that's immediate gratification, everything is done within a few seconds of like how people are looking into the scope of your life, et cetera. So that really shows you how far off the trail we are of really solving this problem. You know, and that's where I feel that Save Homefront's approach, which I'm, you know, I know we're going to unpack, is really making an impact and a difference. When I when I think of military as as someone that's, that's still serving, boot camp is that time where it just kind of gets rid of all that extraneous stuff and lets you focus on what the mission is. But beyond that, beyond that initial training, you're learning the systems, you're learning how to think, how to, I mean, most military officers are, are by and large engineers. You're learning how to use systems to improve or to do whatever the thing is. So it's not so much, you know, leadership is not screaming anymore. Leadership is uh, as a conversation and it's structured and it's systematic. And when you realize really the benefits of what the military can provide, it's it's far and above it's far and above this screaming in your face during boot camp or whatever phase that is. Uh, if you look at the Fortune 500 companies in the U.S., there's a senior VP that is of a military background in each and every one of these companies. If you want to understand how a system works. You're going to have a Navy veteran in there helping you out. If you want to understand a specific component, a very detailed thing, you're going to have someone from the Army or someone from the Air Force involved in what that looks like. I, I like I like how you boil down some of those arcing ideas, right? Because how do you eat an elephant one piece at a time like anything else, right? So some of those overarching ideas of like where we fall in line in terms of how that translates over to the other side of the house, right? Because you're 150% correct in terms of people not understanding, even the people that are performing it understanding that their military occupational specialty can translate, you know, into a different uh, atmosphere in the way that it's described, but can be very applicable to, you know, common things such as logistics operations, those sorts of things. So I, I think that's really brilliant. I mean, there is there's definitely a shift that's happened. There used to be no awareness on PTSD or TBI, traumatic brain injury, and some of the, the terrible things that our service members and first responders deal with. But that is the only thing hitting the news, and it's not the only facet of who we are and what we do. Obviously, I'm still active duty, and I'm hosting this podcast, and we're using Zoom to to make this stuff happen. And it, it it is not even close to who we are. Not all veterans have PTSD. Not all veterans are going to be entrepreneurs. Some veterans are going to go out and they're going to be part of a company and be some kind of mid-level or upper-level management. And they're going to help you do the things you need to do. Some people are very proud and vocal and boisterous with their service. And some uh, might not rather talk about it. And that's okay too. But really, when you look at the amount of veterans uh, in the U.S., something like 17 or 18 million veterans walking around us. Uh, they're everywhere. They're in every community. They're in everything that we're doing. And just having served doesn't mean you're broken. Absolutely. And that's another great point of where our emphasis in our demographic 
is wanting to work with businesses and celebrities that has been have been successful in the entertainment industry, right? Because there's a common thread, and you know, as a as I started developing this business model, what I wanted the vision to look like. For me, one of the things that was amazing was the education that I got along the way. And in every genre, and I challenge anyone out there that's listening, if you know you want to hit me up and you can you know contradict me on this, I'd be glad to have that conversation. But in every genre of entertainment, a U.S. veteran has not only been successful, but has dominated the game, has become iconic. Now. What's the common thread, right? Whether the service was, uh, you know, favorable, even honorable, et cetera. Like I said, service is temporary, you know, support to your country lasts a lifetime. The reality of it is whatever is in that ingredient, no matter what branch of service that you're in, there's something that says, I can be better. I can do better. I can be the best of the best, right? Because Jimi Hendrix, Innovator, Johnny Cash, Rocky Marciano, Jimmy Stewart, Elvis Presley, Ice T. Like, I mean, these are all people that are historic in the game that have military service. Charlie Pride, you know, who just recently passed away. And it's not just in music, it's in sports. All of the legends from the NFL in baseball, Jackie Robinson, another example. Right. So I think it's very important. And I'm talking to the military service folks here and the people that possibly are thinking about joining the military. Utilize this time as the opportunity to be the building blocks of where you want to be successful the most next in your life, because there is going to be that shift. Even for you, even being on active duty, I love this is so cool because you're on active duty and I'm a veteran. You know, and so even for us to share the same atmosphere and be able to have a conversation the way that we are is is fantastic because there is a cultural shift that is going to happen for you. And the more prepared you can be for that and the more you can understand what that looks like, I think you're going to find yourself in a position to be more successful. Well, that's uh, that's good news for me coming up here. I'm, I'm, I'm right at about a year out from retirement and I've been working on building this nonprofit architect empire one block at a time. And uh, all the conversations I have, especially with people like you that have paved the way a little bit, just makes it that much easier for me. And I thank you for that. But we're not here just to talk about veterans, although it's a very important part of what it is we do and and who we are. I want to know how on earth did you get a hold of Paul Sr. at Orange County Choppers and build this bike? I knew that with SHF that, professional entertainment projects were going to be the thing that would get the interest of our community neighbors, right? A lot of veteran charities, there's over 40,000 veterans charities, are focused on two things, PTSD and suicide. And within those 40,000 charities, um, you know, the other big thing that's an issue is the fact that there's a lot of people that aren't necessarily experts in those, in those fields that are wanting to help in those areas, right? If if you're going to build a nonprofit model based around PTSD or suicide, like you really need to understand what that strategy looks like. And you really need to understand what that branding looks like. You're not just going to get it by pasting PTSD or we help veterans with suicide on there and then expect the money's just going to roll in. That's never going to happen right? If anything, it'd probably be the polar opposite. So that's a side note. But um, so we had a relationship with a gentleman named Dylan King, who is the husband of reality TV star, uh, Amy Duggar King from the TLC network and stuff like that. Dylan was very interested in wanting to get involved in the veteran community. He, He had to become educated because it was automatically military right? It wasn't veteran, it was military. And so he's involved in the SEMA uh, group, which SEMA is a, is a huge exclusive auto show out in Las Vegas. And uh, you have to be invited to attend. He's been very successful with that. And he said, let's do a Jeep and then let's put SHF branding on it and all of that. And then we'll debut it at SEMA. 
And I was like, I know nothing about this, man. Like, Cowboy Jacks is real deal. I love camping. I love fishing. I love horseback riding. I've rode horses all over the place. I know nothing about the automotive world. Well, to make a long story short, because of that connection that we made and how amazing that Jeep project turned out, um, that caught the attention initially of Orange County Choppers. And it was because of that project that we really were in the running to be able to be able to get Americana the Chopper. We were competing against three other charities. And I'll never forget the conversation that we had with the guy that was the, um, the donor. He said, you got it. And when he said, you got it, I kind of had this cocky moment in the back of my mind where I was like, yeah, I understand. I got it. Like, I know my game, man. I know, you know, exactly, you know, I'm the MVP of playing here. And then it hit me that we got it. And I was like, oh my God. And, you know, and all that kind of thing. So that's really how that relationship um, was introduced. The educational point to that, build a strategy that has building blocks. If you have a business model and you're not looking at the metrics continuously to see if you're being successful, you're probably going to need to break that down a little bit more to see what adjustments that you need to make in order to start to see those metrics, right? Because X equals no matter what, right? I don't care what business you're in. You know, one of my mentors always said, you know, show me the man at the top or a woman, right? And I'll show you a salesman, right? So when I talk about X equals, whatever your product or service is, it still has to equal metrics, there still has to be a way to judge that efficiency, you know, or there's something that you need to look at. It might be your logistics, it might be your operations, or it might be your branding, but it's probably going to fall in line with one of those three things. So since 2016, we've had one successful entertainment project. Well, what's our vision? How do we want to execute through entertainment projects? How do we know if it's working? Because the engagement that we have to go to the next place for the entertainment project. They're very, very simple steps that I think people just completely look over. But that's going to get you to the Orange County Choppers. Does that make sense? Yeah, it is. I I love that you you partnered with someone that wanted to take you somewhere that you didn't necessarily want to go in in an area that you weren't necessarily necessarily familiar with in in the auto show world. I knew instantly when you said SEMA, I knew what what it was. There's a lot of people listening that that are like, I have no idea what this car show thing is. And I got a chance to look you up here as we were were chatting here. Uh, I knew instantly what that was. It's a big deal. I used to be into hot rods and a whole bunch of different stuff, but it's not about what it is that you do and the scope of what, you, what you're looking at. It is about the relationships and what you can build with your community partners. And that's just community partners, no matter you know what nonprofit industry you're in. It, I've had a very successful uh, guest on the show, Vincent James. He, he does keep music alive and he partners with musically inclined celebrities like Julie Andrews and Jack Black to help get his message out. And you can go back through, uh, the history and and pull that show up and there's a little template in there on how to contact celebrities. But most nonprofits, in my opinion, especially in the startup phase, I feel like their vision's not not big enough. Like it's almost, and I don't know if this is true for everyone, but it's almost like they don't believe in themselves yet. And when you're looking at something that like you've done, like partnering to get a, a, on SEMA and then get getting the attention of the Orange County Choppers and what we'll get into with the museum project that, we're, that you're working on, it you have that bigger vision. You have that grander vision. You understand what it takes to bring people together to get them in the same room and work towards a common goal. And I, I really appreciate about that about you and what you're doing. Well, I, I think you, you hit an interesting point there. <clears throat> and I'd like to push back just a little bit, if I may. I, I don't necessarily think that it's people not believing themselves enough. I think what it is is that it's taking an idea and just being able to, you know, to black label that for lack of a better phrase, and just thinking that that one idea is going to get you to the big gang. We got the SEMA Jeep because we did a video with the Sailor Brothers, who are award winning directors. And when Dylan saw the quality of the music video that we did, that is what helped him to feel comfortable to think that we could play on the big stage with him for the SEMA project. What I'd like to do is pull that back for a minute and say, it's really about honing in on your branding 
and not thinking that your vision is going to take you all the way through. So you got to set the vision and then you got to start dialing it back to square one of what it looks like from the vision to creating the operations and logistics. Okay. I, I use this example a lot too. And I, I am a little bit unorthodox and controversial. I'll just let you know that right up front. I believe that some people, when they make music and it has God in it or Jesus in it, they don't necessarily have to, um, or they think that they don't necessarily have to um, do a great production, right? Because it's got God or Jesus, it's going to sell, which is a $13 billion industry, by the way. So you put God or Jesus on anything from a branding aspect of it, you know what I'm saying? You're, you're looking at a major distribution point. But my point is, is that the quality of the product or service or the branding is what is really going to help you to make a difference. That in stacking your partnerships. You know, one of the things that I talked about at the Veteran Social Summit um, last week, I think it was, although it seems like all the same week here recently. But um, I talked about your brand creating with brands that matter. I knew right out the gate that if SHF was going to be successful, if it was going to disrupt the landscape of things, I had to figure out how to partnership with brands that were bigger than myself, but created an organic relationship, right? So I don't necessarily think that people believe in each other, you know, themselves enough. Um, And they may. But I think that if you don't have belief in yourself, you can have belief in your product or service if you build a strategic model from vision to mission to logistics to operations and so forth. Does that make sense? It, it absolutely does. And uh, I wanted to jump in there about six times, but I wanted you to get through that. This is are some of the things that we talk about through the nonprofit architects all the time. And I wanted you to get through it unprompted to see what your take was on this, but it is without a doubt exactly in line with, with what we do and the things that we talk about. Being a nonprofit is a legitimate business. In order to run a business, you have to have revenue coming in. You have to be able to have a good product or service or a talent going out, something that's going to have that impact. And you have to really dial in the business acumen. You have to take the time if you don't already have it, to get the knowledge that you need to be successful, whether that's through listening to a free podcast, I can recommend a good one. Whether that's hiring a consultant, I have tons that I know that I can refer you to if I'm not your cup of tea. Or it's, it's, it's getting the knowledge and the mentorship and accountability to get you where you need to go. And when you have a big heart and a big vision, and you just say yes to this nonprofit thing, you might not have the business acumen or skills uh, to make it a success when you initially start. And that's okay. And most small time businesses, right? Small business takes about three years to get into the black. Okay. So if you think you're going to jump into the nonprofit realm, which in my opinion, we can debate it back and forth is 10 times harder than the for-profit realm, in my opinion. And I do it every day. um, And I've been a part of a for-profit model also. It's not. You can't just say we got this cause, we want benevolent funding, you know, and and the money's going to roll in. You know, you make an excellent point in understanding that it can't just be a vision. You've got to build an infrastructure. And I tell my son all the time, you know, don't reinvent the wheel. Find a way to make the wheel work for you, right? There's no sense in you completely clearing the slate you know, 150% and think that you're coming up with something that is so different. So whatever, I promise you that if it's, if it's too far from different, you're going to have a much longer road ahead of you. And another point that I want to make on something that you said that I think is important too, is that don't become so married with everything that you're not willing to make changes. Because when SHF started, It was a help up, not a handout. We wanted to give emergency funding to veterans in order to get them to go to the VA. Okay. But here's what I found. You start looking at the liability on that money and you start looking about of all the, just the different hoops that you have to jump through and everything else. 
then all of a sudden you start to see, okay, well, this, this isn't necessarily what needs to happen, right? At least we're not in business to do that. And you've got to be humble enough to say we're not in the business to do that. And that's not where we want to go, or at least that's not what's going to get us the jump, right? Because our original name was Save 22, Save XXII. And people kept constantly referring at events to veteran suicide. And that's not what the XXII was. It was a timestamp by 2022 that we would be able to accomplish the goals that we wanted to accomplish with what that campaign was at the time, right? So you have to be flexible. You know, your vision is is more so like a uh, a Plato, if you will, and it, and you're going to transform that over time into different things. You know, because I think that's another thing is like, oh, I'll start a nonprofit, veteran suicide, boom. You know, we're not going to get a lawyer, we're not going to get a CFO, and then you get audited. You know, now you you could possibly go to jail or you'll. You know, you'll never be able to operate in that space again because it is a privilege. This is a privilege to to work in this atmosphere, to be a federally registered charity is a privilege. And there's a lot that goes along with that. I like how you brought up that that your vision for this has changed over time. You know, when I look back at my life, you know, one of the reasons I joined the Navy is I didn't have a lot of of real options. I didn't have good grades. I didn't have money to go to college. And the Navy was a conduit for me to, for, to do that. And I got in the Navy and I started doing well. And I was like, you know what I want to do? I want to be master chief. I want to be the master chief of the Navy, the highest possible enlisted rank out there. And then as I started progressing through and I looked at some of the numbers and what it looked like to get promoted. And I looked at what retirement might look like. And I was like, you know, my, my vision for this is, is changing with my family, with my needs, with my desires. And I decided to apply for an officer program and they were going to pay for me to go to school. And through all that time, it's not that I wasn't doing good things. It's that the vision of my life got updated, tweaked or changed based on a few circumstances, uh, both internal to the Navy and then, you know, internal to family life of what that might look like and what might be appropriate for my family. There's not a there's not a person out there that says I'm an enlisted failure because I didn't make Master Chief. You know, there might be some smart aleck out there that'll give me a hard time for it. Haven't heard this, but but by and large, no one's going to say that at all. They're like, "Oh, wow, you went through this, and then you got commissioned, and you're taking care of your family." Oh, and by the way, you run a podcast. That's really cool. That's amazing. Good job. And it wasn't my original vision, but the original vision would never have brought me here. I, I constantly stress staying tuned in to those metrics. Listen, folks, some of you out there don't belong here. Okay. And that's going to sting really bad when it finally comes to fruition for you. Okay. What I highly suggest is no matter what your idea is, right? We talked about X equals gauge the metrics. And I really wouldn't, you know, and I know I'll probably take some criticism from this, but honestly, building the brand. And understanding what you want to do is more important than making money, okay? But in the nonprofit realm, if you start asking people for money, they're going to want to know where their money's going and who it's helping, right? We've had thousands of dollars funnel through SHF, but it's been for specific projects that is help us to build the brand. We're not even to the point four years in to where we're making any kind of significant money. But what has that since 2016 done by doing the music video, creating the SHF honors, getting with Dylan King with SEMA? And then now the big show is working with Orange County Choppers and Americana the Chopper, right? And authentically American. You know, being able to get to that point shows me step by step then I'm moving in the right direction. If we would have had a successful entertainment project in 2016 and I wouldn't have got on the hustle, you know, and stuff like that of figuring out what was going to happen in 2017, I probably would have took a step back and looked at it and said, you know what, something's got to change. And again, that's where you go back to looking at what needs to change. Is it something in my branding that needs to change? Is it the way that, you know, I run my operation? What do my logistics look like? 
am, am I being able to get the message out there as clear as I can? So what I'm saying is, is that business is a continuous moving part. And if you, if you can't think that way, then it doesn't matter if it's nonprofit or anything else. You're not an entrepreneur. You're not meant to be successful in this field. Yeah, you have to be able to continually evaluate from whatever metrics matter to you, from whatever side of the operation matters, to continually evaluate, tweak, improve, test, and try it again. Tweak, test, try it again. Tweak, test, try it again. Uh, Through all of these things and through all these things that we do, and if you've been listening to this show for a long time, this is some of the same stuff that that filters its way into a couple different episodes. You're not going to have it right on your first go. You're going to do something wrong. It's not going to go, your first event's not going to be all sunshine and roses. Maybe your second event's not easier, but your third event's getting better and your fourth event is getting better. But there has, there has to be a better. The problem is, is you can't live your business on a pipe dream, right? There has to be a better, you know, or you're in the wrong place. Another thing I think is really important too is to say, if you're always building, you're always working. And if you're always working, then you're always working on what not to do and on what to do. And you can't be the smartest person in the room. You have to have and be surrounded by people and be able to strategically maneuver with people, not in a manipulative way, right? Because our big thing is reciprocal value at SHF, but be able to strategically get people involved to see what's in it for them. Your cause isn't going to be enough. Your cause isn't enough. There's, uh, Jax was mentioning there's more than, you know, 40,000 uh, veteran nonprofits out there. There's more like 53,000 veteran service organizations out there. And there's 2.5 million nonprofits in the U.S., just in the U.S. right now. I went through uh, over November and I highlighted, I couldn't, I couldn't in, in good faith do a fundraiser for one uh, organizations over my birthday. I've, I've talked to too many of them. So I went through and I promoted more than 30 different organizations throughout the month of November. And that was just me and just 30. But there was so many with similar missions and serving similar communities and serving similar purposes. I think I had like uh, 10 or 12 veteran service organizations on, on my page that month. Just the cause alone isn't going to have money uh, dropping from the rooftops for you. You know, there's organizations out there for veterans that are going to take veterans out and get them engaged and take them out hunting or fishing or whatever or surfing. And that's great. And there's nothing wrong with that. But just because you start one that looks like that doesn't mean you're all of a sudden going to have funding. You know, people being more conscientious, are they going to back you for this reason? We had uh, a couple of big veteran nonprofits kind of make some mistakes in the last couple of years. And I got a lot of funding and they didn't use it very well. So now people are more weary of just tossing dollars just because you're a veteran veteran organization. They want to know what are you doing with it, where the money is going, and is it a good use of their funding? Yeah. And and that's my point. Take the time to build your brand. Take your time to really understand what your business is going to do that is not only going to inspire people to want to work with you, but also, how your business is going to be different. You know, you and I talked about it offline that, you know, a lot of people hear the word nonprofit and they think that people aren't getting paid, you know, and then you have these, you have these charities out here, some of them. Sorry if I'm offending you, but I'm, I just tell it like it is, you know, because I feel like I can from the position that I'm in. Taking your time to really build your brand and how your brand is going to be different makes, a huge difference in the landscape of, you know, what you're going to be able to accomplish. You're not good at whatever you want to be good at. You're good at whatever you're meant to be good at. Yeah, I took a, a nonprofit approach to the work that I want to do, but I I ushered in the skill sets that I knew that I was good at as a cushion to help me get there as a student of the gang. And what was kind of cool about that is, is that that provided me the opportunity to be very different. I wasn't even thinking about that part of it. Although I think you need to do your market research and understand your competitors and all that stuff. But I think you probably either have other episodes on that or that goes without saying. 
I'm more so wanting to focus on you to get you to be pushed and motivated to the edge of like, okay, how can I think without walls? How can I take the skill sets that I have and turn them into something that's going to be different and innovative, right? And if I'm not that person and I'm just the guy that's got an idea, how do I start to circulate those kinds of people around me that can execute those sorts of things? Absolutely. If you've got the big vision and you're the creative type, that first person you should be bringing in is someone that's going to make sure the books are in order, that make sure the numbers are working, that are fine-tuning that details. If you're the guy that they, they love the, the office work and they love making sure all that stuff is in order, maybe you need to bring in a creative type person that's going to help be boisterous and, and scream your brand from the rooftops. Figure out what the things maybe you're not as good at or maybe not the type of person you are or maybe things that you just don't like doing and bring someone in that's going to complement you and that you're going to be be together as a team to help grow your mission and your vision. Which is your brand, essentially. And listen, if you're in this space and you're not interested in making money, you're in the wrong space. I don't, I'll argue with anybody, Okay. Wounded Warrior makes a tremendous amount of money and employs a tremendous amount of people. I think the surplus of the amount of funding that they have just through their giving structure alone is multi-millions, right? American Red Cross, another example, okay, of a nonprofit that makes money. The NFL, another example of a nonprofit that makes money, okay? As a matter of fact, You want to get to the point to where you have so much money that not only are you executing programs upon programs, but you can hire the absolute best financial logistics and operations people on the planet to work with you because that's where sustainability comes in. Anyone that tells you that they don't want to make money is telling you, I don't want to be sustainable. There's a couple of rare exceptions of people that have very established careers that are wanting to do something, but that's a completely different animal. And more than likely, if you dig deep enough into it, there's a financial stream happening somewhere. I'm not as well versed as our CFO and stuff like that of like how the jargon needs to be set out and presented because there's rules and regulations on all of that stuff. But I think it's something to the gist of that just because you see 100% of the proceeds go to the cause doesn't necessarily mean 100% of the proceeds are going to the cause the way that you think, right? Because nonprofit boils down to three models, administration, fundraising, and programs. Those are the only three coffers that there are. Um, And there's some innovative techniques that, you know, we can uh, get into perhaps not in this episode, but at some point. Um, of how you can leverage some of those things to be able to pay your people, keep your percentages low, and still be able to execute what you want to at the end of the day. But you've got to understand that part of it too. I mean, I know we've kind of bounced around to different places and it's more so been sort of a hodgepodge, but this is my real first opportunity to let the chain off and get loose, you know, and be able to really dig in and talk to you people out there that are in the same space that I am. One of the things that we also wanted to develop with SHF that I feel like we're executing is becoming a skeleton key to work with any other business. So we don't really have any sort of competition, right? Now, I'm not saying that you can do that with what you're doing, okay? What I'm saying is is that that was one of those cool little nuggets that you know we took the time and I took the time to develop to say, how can I work with everybody to where I don't really have any competition? And entertainment uh, will provide you that opportunity, whereas to say if it's an apparel company, there, there, there might be some cool ways to dig into that. I mean, I don't think we can get into that today. But so think about those kinds of things, too. Right. So what I'm saying is, in a nutshell, is your mission isn't necessarily how you do the work to get to the end state. That is another thing that's super important. Your mission is the end state. What is all of this funding doing in order to help X? But there's a lot of cool tools in your toolbox, man, of how you can get there. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be 
anything that seems conventional at all, right? And that's the beautiful part of being in an entrepreneurial space. Yeah, there's definitely the flexibility to do it differently and still be successful, which I love. Jax, what do you have coming up here in 2021 that you want to make sure the people out there know about? Oh, man. Shameless plug time, huh? Shameless plug. <laughs> um, we, you can go to shfveterans.org. And we are blessed to have Americana the Chopper. It was created with Orange County Choppers, Paul Sr., Josh Allison, all those amazing people from the Discovery Show, American Chopper. And this is a tribute to 100 years of Veterans Day in this country. Okay. Now, typically what people will do in this situation is they'll auction it off or they'll sell it. They'll get some money for their programs and they'll move on. Okay. But because of the historical significance of this, of this project and what it represents, I wanted to, or we wanted to create an opportunity for history in the making. And we want to see Americana the Chopper and the history and our legacy to be in a museum, not in someone's garage. And it's really simple how you can be a part of history. When you go to shfveterans.org, you'll see uh, a place where you can be able to get a shirt that says, this shirt makes history. We're partnered with Orange County Choppers and Authentically American. Authentically American is amazing because their mission is to create more American jobs and how they're doing that is selling apparel. So we've created a custom t-shirt. It's the most comfortable thing, your go-to shirt um, that you can put on and you actually become a part of history because we're only doing a million folks across the country. Now we may come up with other ideas moving forward, but for this particular shirt, that's it, okay? Once we reach a million folks, metrics, right? Because then we can say Save Homefront has um, been able to help a million people to create a proper depiction for U.S. veterans, which is powerful. Then at that point, we're going to seek out a museum starting with the Smithsonian Institute of where we can find Americana the Chopper, her final home. The cool thing about this is, is that this opportunity in owning the intellectual properties, again, has opened up so many opportunities, creating a toy, getting it in a video game, you know, milking those intellectual properties and those branding experiences as much as you possibly can. And the other part is, is that we can partner with your brand. What's your mission for 2021? What's your focus of what you want to do in your business, right? Let's say you want to get people in shape, right? Because that's a big one, you know, for a New Year's resolution. You can partner with This Shirt Makes History, create an opportunity to where you can be innovative with your branding and be a part of history at the same time. But do you see how these different layers, Travis, is, is how it works, you know? That's how you constantly are creating new relationships. A plus B equals C, right? But A and B doesn't necessarily have to look like A and B to get to C. It's 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 a powerful way. There's there's not one best way to do this. There's so many ways you can monetize your nonprofit. There's so many streams of incomes, different partnerships, in different ways to work together for a better vision for all Americans, not just veterans, not just your nonprofit, just not saving the whales, but for everyone. The way that we do that is through partnerships because we know that we're stronger together. Hey, Jax, where's the best place for people to get a hold of you? So we have a, an, an amazing website um, called shfveterans.org, or you can get us through the traditional channels at Save Homefront for Instagram, um, Twitter, and I do believe Facebook. And if, you, and if you're interested in wanting to expand on your brand, you know, I uh, have over 20 years experience uh, of branding um, in professional entertainment, and my consulting is available for you, not for free, but for reciprocal value. <laughs> Fantastic. Hey, Cowboy Jax, thanks so much for being on the show today uh, and opening up about how you created those partnerships and were featured in SEMA and with Paul Singer and Orange County Choppers. Thanks so much for sharing your vision hired today. Absolutely. And the last thing that I'd like to say to everyone out there is that if you're going to operate in this space, please, 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 step one, develop your infrastructure. 
get an attorney, get a CFO, and make sure that you have your infrastructure, your back end, if you will, completely squared away. And if you're looking at the way that you want to execute your vision, you need to scale it back to step one and not just run with your vision at 100 miles an hour. Thank you so much for your time today. I love the nonprofit architect. And Travis Johnson, we love you. <laughs> Thanks a lot, bro. Hey, everyone. Being able to educate your board is one of the most important ways for a leader to build strong relationships and foster a positive and productive culture between board members and their executive director. Run by leadership expert Mark Buzan, the Nonprofit Board Summit provides outstanding know-how, resources, and tips for leaders looking to step up and unlock the full potential of their endeavors. If you're a nonprofit executive director looking to build a stronger board, visit nonprofitboardsummit.org EDS. Or if you're a board member looking to make more of an impact, visit nonprofitboardsummit.org. The Nonprofit Board Summit runs from February 26th through the 28th. I'll hope to see you there.